Yes, I had the flu. And yes, I had the flu, and now I'm back. Boy, that flu is terrible. It's horrible. Everyone should get the flu shot. I am now convinced everyone in the world should get the flu shot. That was terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It was like one of those things where, you know, you had like this fever and it would come, it would go, and then all of a sudden you think you're feeling better, and then you get up and like the world is spinning. And if anybody, I'm sure most people who are watching, if anybody's ever had like a really bad hangover, and you know, like, oh my God, you can't get your head off the pillow. Well, this was like a hangover that just lasted for like a week. I literally couldn't get my head off the pillow for a week. And by the way, thank you all for those who wished me well. I am back, I'm alive, and we're ready to go again. So I'm very sorry that we were dark. That's what they call it here. I'm a lawyer, but I'm now getting all the show business lingo. We were dark here in the studio for a little over a week, but I am back. I am feeling better than ever. I'm very energized and ready to go. Let's try to help as many people as possible, and let's try to continue what we do well here which is helping people and, and, and making people feel like humans and also entertaining and laughing and everything else we do here. In the meantime, I would re be remiss, I would be remiss, I have all my news here, but I would be remiss if uh, I didn't wish all the women out there, and we have a majority of women watching our show, sorry, Jeff Bossy. Uh, and by the way, I know you called, I know you called Kim and spoke to Kim the other day and you said, can you tell Brad it's Bosey? Not bossy. I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm 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 used to saying bossy. Okay, Jeff Bosey, and probably I'm getting your name wrong anyway. Uh, but the telephone number is one eight hundred five two nine five four six five. But for all the women out there, uh, Happy International Women's Day, two thousand eighteen. Uh, it is uh, hashtag Press for Progress is what they are calling the celebration for Women's Day. It's actually odd because uh, you know in the United States here it's not a big deal. I mean, it's now becoming a big deal, but in countries all around the world, this is like, this is like bigger than Mother's Day here in the United States. I mean, you know, in the United States, it's like you got Mother's Day, you got Valentine's Day. You know, a lot of people who are born in the United States of America don't know it's International Women's Day, but people outside of the United States celebrate this uh, all over. It was first celebrated, just for anybody of interest, in, in 1909, 15,000 people marched through the streets of New York demanding improved pay, shorter hours, and voting rights. So even though, even though it's like not a thing here in the United States, although it's becoming a thing, it's becoming a thing because we're becoming more globalized here in the United States of America, and there's more people from outside uh, who are born in other countries who are here and making it a thing, and making it a thing, uh, uh, it actually started in the United States. But if you go, like for example, if you go to like, the grandmas of the world in the United States of America, whoever these grandmas are who are born in the United States, grandmas who were born in the United States, and you say, by the way, it's International Women's Day, they would look at you pretty puzzled. If you said, you know, in, in May, hey, it's Mother's Day, they would absolutely know what you're talking about. But it is becoming a bigger deal here. It was marked by rallies, panel discussions, seminars, networking events, performances, uh, in New York, a rally was held in Washington Square Park in Gre Greenwich Village. In Atlanta, the Women's Chamber of Commerce hosted a luncheon and roundtable on the state of the women. San Francisco hosted a benefit. And besides events in the United States, there were marches, celebrations, exhibits overseas. Uh, and uh, I know for a fact that there are many women out there who are not born in the United States, who are living in the United States, who, who to them, this is Valentine's Day. You better celebrate Women's Day. You better be bringing the woman in your life flowers. Every woman should be getting flowers on, on International Women's Day, okay? It's like Mother's Day for you know, people who were born here who don't understand. That's what it is. So how do you celebrate International Women's Day? Uh, we celebrated by working here in the office. I wonder if there's an International Men's Day. How come the men don't get celebration? And apparently there is. It is on November 19th. And it's celebrated in more than 60 countries. It focuses on improving health for men and boys, championing positive male role models, boosting gender relations. I can tell you, I have lived 49 years across November 9th. Was it November 9th? November 19th. I've lived 49 years. Nobody on November 19th ever wished me happy Men's Day. This is cute. I like this story. And then we're going to get to immigration. I like this story. Did everybody see... Michelle Obama meet the two-year-old girl who was captivated by her portrait. Apparently there was, uh, you know, we talked about it 
I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we said, you know, uh, the Obamas had their portraits done by very famous artists. And, um, and it's up in the uh, National Portrait Gallery, uh, uh, I believe down, where's the National Portrait Gallery? In Washington, D.C. So uh, Michelle Obama's picture's up, and over the weekend, there's a two-year-old little girl, and there's a picture of her who was just, uh, we'll get her name, Parker. And Parker was captivated by Michelle Obama's picture. She just sat there for minutes and minutes, just staring, captivated by the photograph. And there was a gentleman, uh, there's a gentleman, what's his name? Uh, we'll get his name, Ben Hines. Ben Hines, a 37-year-old from North Carolina. He was standing nearby to the side and watched the moment unfold. And he took out his cell phone, snapped a photo of Parker, who was mesmerized by Michelle Obama. It went viral, this picture. And after it went viral, people were begging Michelle Obama to go meet this little girl, Parker. Now, in the, in the course of four or five days, this little girl, Parker, went from just a little girl who picture went viral around the world to now, I mean, she's lived almost like a full life in only two years, to now dancing. Michelle Obama went to meet her and danced with her, danced with uh, Parker to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off. Do we have a video uh, or just a picture? No, we're not going to show any video, okay, because it's probably part of the NBC Olympics videos. <laughs> who knows what it is? But there is, a, there is a video, you can go watch it. We don't show videos here anymore, unless it's a video of us. But uh, uh, Michelle Obama and Parker, it was really cute. Go watch the video. It was such a cute little, little thing. And uh, uh, I love that story. And, um, and, and what is ironic about the whole entire thing, uh, at the unveiling last month, how, how uh, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, when you're uh, almost like, not like prof not proficient, but clairvoyant, or you know how you know like you were able to almost tell the f tell the future. At 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 her portraits unveiling last month, Michelle Obama said, "quote She was thinking of young girls when she was doing this portrait, and uh, and she was thinking of young girls who, in the years ahead, will come in this place and see an image of someone who looks like them hanging on the wall of a great American institution." And I know the kind of impact that will have on their lives because I was one of those little girls too. And here just a week later, and here just a week later, uh, it already happened. So that's a great story.